Now I'm on. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. And we are going to do a beginner style embroidery project from Kimberbell. And it is their uh, mini quilts. So I'm looking at the chat here. I see lots of people in the chat. We've got 92 and we just started. So Deborah wants to know who's picking your own fabrics. You absolutely can source your own fabrics. So, all right. For those of you that are new, I am Becky from Power Tools with Thread and I am uh, a home embroiderer just like you. I do not work for any particular company. I'm not on contract with anybody. And I just love to share my love of embroidery, machine embroidery with you guys. I'm power tools with thread, not power tools for hand stitching. I don't do, or hand stitching with thread. I don't do anything by hand if I can avoid it. So one of the things that I like to do is, let me get my chair up a little higher if I can. Oh, you're welcome, Ellen. She says, thank you for doing this for us. You are more than welcome. Um, so I'm just going to take you through my process of how I do machine embroidery. And sometimes it varies from industry standard, but you guys, I just do what works for me. I use the products that work for me and I, I just do this in kind of a, maybe a little bit different flow. The things that I do, you absolutely do not have to do if you don't want to. Okay. But I'm going to give you uh, some, maybe some different ideas that you had not thought of when you're doing machine embroidery. And what I do here applies to just about every home machine embroidery project that I've got going on here. All right. So you can watch this later when you get your CD, Patty. Yes, absolutely. So the only thing that you absolutely have to have to make these, uh, these little mini quilts is the CD. So let's go over what you need in order to be able to do all of this or what, I, what you can get, okay? So this is what this looks like. This is the January Kimberbell mini quilt. Chilling with my snowies, okay? Turned out just adorable. You might notice on here, I don't have the embellishments. There were some pom-poms that were to go on these little snow caps. Had I thought about it, I would have just stitched them on myself. I'm not a fan of 3D embellishments because they tend to get smushed in storage over the course of the year. So, and, you know, depending on how you store them. And then this is a wire rack from Ackfeld Wire. Uh, I don't know if the wire hanger that is included in the kit from Kimberbell is the same as this or not. It might be a wall hanger. So I'm not sure what that looks like. So just I know that if you get the kit from my girlfriend's quilt shop, then uh, you're going to get a wire hanger included with your kit. So that's very cool. OK, no smushing. Vicky says that's right. No smushing. OK. So one thing, so you'll hear me use Kimberbell and my girlfriend's quilt shop kind of interchangeably sometimes. So Kimberbell is the digitizing company that makes this design. Kimberbell also creates and has supplies to create the design. My girlfriend's quilt shop is owned by the twin sister of Kim from Kimberbell. Her name is Chris. And their, her shop is down the road, I don't know, a mile maybe, uh, from the Kimberbell warehouse in Logan, Utah. So the links I have below this video are in order to get the CD and all the supplies that you need, are they go to my girlfriend's quilt shop because she is an authorized Kimberbell retailer, and that's where you can get that. If you want to patronize your own quilt shop, that's perfectly fine. Please do to try to keep these quilt shops in business. That's really important. And uh, 
otherwise, you know, or you might live in a quilt shop desert, right? Where there's just not one anywhere nearby. So feel free to jump on that link. And I will preface this by saying that is an affiliate link for me. And I do make a commission on those sales purchases. That's why I appreciate you using my links because it helps keep this kind of content going for y'all, right? Okay. So you can use a glue gun to put on your embellishments. Yes, I might use some Velcro. We'll see how that goes. I, I need to get with that. So there is a Kimberbell batting that you can use in your project. Okay, so you can do that. Matter of fact, I need to grab a piece of scrap batting. I didn't, I knew there was something I was forgetting. I'm going to go grab that. There is Kimberbell ultra light mesh cutaway stabilizer. So you need a mesh cutaway stabilizer. This is what it looks like in the package. And this is what it looks like out of the package. It's kind of sheer, it's very lightweight, and it does not change the hand of your project, All right? So that's good. We got that, right? You do have to have, the only thing you absolutely have to have is the CD. And this contains all of the embroidery designs, your how-to instructions, and uh, what else? SVG cut files. I'm going to talk to you guys about cut files in just a minute. So I've talked a lot about cut files over the last two mornings. I do a Monday through Friday, uh, 7 a.m. Central. It's called the Stituation Room, and it's a virtual stitching retreat. And this week... I went over how to cut fabric and how to cut vinyl in on Wednesday, today's Thursday. So it was Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. I'll link to those videos right up here that you can check if you're catching the replay. And that was at what time, what time? 6.56, I need to make a note. So that uh, you guys can go back and look and see how that's done if you need that kind of help. So I will tell you right now, 656 KB vids. I have to make myself a note. So I will tell you, um, this video is going to be geared toward the beginner embroiderer. This is for the person who's a little bit intimidated or a lot intimidated by their embroidery machine. If you are a seasoned embroiderer and you just want this running in the background and you go on and do your thing, that's awesome. You go right ahead. Um, I'm going to quickly i've got an open package of the kimber bell uh batting i've got to grab that real quick before we go any further y'all let me do that right now I had some extra from a previous project. So that's what I'm going to use on this. I apologize. I hate to run off like that. And this month we are making the February runner. Scotty dog. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Super sticker. You are Scotty. You're on a fixed income. Love. You don't have to do that, but thank you. I appreciate that. So there we go. Okay. So this is what we're making. And today, what we're going to make is the lady bird. So we're going to jump ahead in the instructions just a little bit. We're making this gal right here, okay? So she is the bird, the wing, her crown, and two little hearts make up that block, all right? So that's what we're doing. If you choose to get the kit, you're going to get all six months, January through June, in a package. So all of your fabrics are going to come. This is just the fabric kit. It says fabric only. So there are separate purchases. If you want to do this, you can do, this is the fabric kit. Then there is the CD. This is a separate purchase. Okay. And then there is the embellishment kit. And this is a separate purchase. So just, and if you want to, you can certainly, let's say you have, you know, you, you love to do some vinyl cutting on your own cutting machine, then the months where we get to the vinyl, you might have some of that already. So 
I, you know, just think about that. You can, there's always options. All right. Let me put all these because they're, they slide around. There is also a thing called background quilting. Now I will be using the designs from Kimberbell for their background quilting. So that is a separate purchase as well. So all of the, the CD, the fabric kit and the embellishments you would get from a quilt shop, the background quilting designs, you would go to Kimberbell.com. I've got the link to that below. And then you would get your background quilting designs from Kimberbell. They have them where you can get all six months in one download purchase. You guys, there's like a gazillion different sizes for each different month, different designs and everything. So you're getting a lot of background quilting if you decide to do that. Yes. Okay. Um, you're welcome, Sharon. I appreciate that. So you, you can certainly do that. If you don't want to do the background quilting, you do not have to do that. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to essentially be embroidering two embroidery designs. First, the background quilting, and then we're going to add the ladybird on top of that. And the reason I'm choosing the ladybird instead of starting with the letters like they show in the instructions is because those are really easy to do. The ladybird requires just a little bit something different when it comes to using the foam. And so I want to show you how to do that. Okay. So as I mentioned, the foam, now I have a little project board here. This is just a piece of foam board. I got it at Walmart and I spray adhesive, uh, adhesive some batting on it. And then I hot glued an extra binding strip on, on the edges, okay, just to make it cute. So I've got my background fabric on here. This is the one with the white dots. Can you see the white on white? Okay, that's the background fabric. I did not have any Kimberbell foam. So this is a piece of foam I have a bolt of from Pellon 711F. I think it's a fusible. I won't be ironing it, okay? It's got one side fusible. So I will put that one side fusible uh, probably down, but I don't think I'm gonna be ironing this. So I just have a little piece of foam, all right? And I had cut out the crown with the glitter I'm concerned that I shouldn't have mirrored. I don't know. I've got a, when I, when I did the cut, so here's her little crown. And if you want to see how this is done again, you, uh, I linked to that video earlier, but I've got a little bit extra along the side. If I need to cut it again, if it doesn't work, if my crown is backwards, I can cut it again. Okay. Here is the fabric for her body. And this is the pre-cut for her wing. So I will show you on the fabric cut for the body, how to trim fabric the old fashioned way. But if you have a cutting machine, it's, it's much easier to go ahead and do this. Matter of fact, my iron, where did that go? Yeah, I need to get that. I've got an iron up here. And then the little heart one, or this is heart two. Heart one is out of this color. And if the ones I have are cut backwards, I have a scrap I'll use. Mr. Bird is cut backwards. So I don't know why that happened because I cut it just the way it was in the thing. We, anyway, that's my drama, not yours. You don't have to worry about that. So, all right. And then again, I've got my batting. Okay, let's talk about what we need for the embroidery machine itself. As long as you cut it pretty side down, you should have mirrored it. I did mirror it pretty side down. We'll see. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope it fits. Yes. Can you use batting or fleece instead of foam? I would use batting. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Fusible fleece, that might work as well. Sure. You just need something to give it a little puff. That'll be fine. Uh, when I embroider, I like to have a little tray handy. This is a clear tray. I use this mostly glasses. I've got duckbill scissors for when I need those for a project. I use fr friction markers. These do not ghost, so these are handy. I have a purple fang that I use to help press stuff down so my fingers are not in the embroidery field. Little pen. I have some uh, spring action scissors snips from Framore. 
These are my main, these are gingers. These are my main little snips that I use to clip threads. I have some double curved embroidery scissors. You guys, when you go to buy these, invest, okay? You're gonna be doing a lot of cutting with in your embroidery journey, all right? And these double curved scissors from Ginger, uh, they're, they're not cheap. Buy the good ones. The cheap ones will hurt your fingers and they'll fall apart and it's a waste of money. So there's very rarely that I tell you guys that you need to absolutely get something, but you need to invest in a good pair of scissors for the to be able to trim in the hoop okay i've got a little pen for my screen that i don't really need i have my brother this is a little brother tool it's actually a screwdriver and this tool is very handy for these old arthritic hands to be able to turn those little knobs on the hoops so i use that and then i keep a kimberbell usb handy or my own usb in this case okay all righty did you put heat and bond light on all your applique pieces? Yes, Jackie, I did. Thank you for asking that. Yes. Okie doke. I have my Kimberbell tape dispenser with Kimberbell paper tape inside. Okay. It's very handy. You're going to need that. I like to use organ needles. These are organ 7511. EBBR, that stands for embroidery. If you have a brother or a baby lock machine, you got a package of organ needles in your accessory case. There's a reason for that. That's because they are timed at the factory with organ needles. So if you are using a needle other than organ on a brother or a baby lock machine and you're having thread shredding problems, switch to organ and see if that doesn't help because I bet it fixes the problem for you. Okay. I am using Class A style 15, uh, the 70D, which is a 60 weight bobbin from Designs and Machine Embroidery. I like the pre-wounds, okay? These, this tube will last me two years. So these are great if you can get these, all right? I just, they're much fuller than, see how full they are? They're much fuller than what I can do on the machine itself if I make my own bobbins, okay? All righty, got that under control. Now, if you have a brother or a baby lock machine that is a combo machine, meaning it sews and embroiders either one, a little tip about this, before you turn the machine on, put the embroidery arm on first so that when you turn on the machine, the machine knows, oh, we're going to embroider today instead of sew. The default is sewing usually on those machines. You might have a machine like the Stellaire or the Luminaire or the Baby Lock equivalent to that where it will do both because you get a menu. Do you want to sew, embroider, Disney, design center, whatever. Is that what that is? That Yes, that's what that is. So uh, you can certainly do sewing with the embroidery arm on on those higher end machines. I'm stitching on the Brother Luminaire XP3. Okay. I'll just turn this here and get, well, I'll hit the button and give you a gander at her. This is Darla. Okay. So we've got sewing, embroidery, Disney, and my design center. So we're going to be using the embroidery feature, but the embroidery arm is on. If you've got a machine like my NQ3700D, it's a combo machine, but it doesn't have the menu like that. You really need to put the embroidery arm on and then turn the machine on. It likes that better because it'll have to reset. How do you know when to mirror a particular piece? You usually will mirror, uh, Marlene, you will usually mirror if you are uh, putting the fabric pretty side down, or in this case, the vinyl, because the vinyl has that clear plastic on it. And I cut that pretty side down. Um, yeah, okay. So if you have a combo machine, your machine probably came with, let me pop this open show you guys this is the beauty of the one of the beauties of the luminaire instead of having to unscrew this faceplate there's a button right here and i pop it and it comes off that is so handy and there inside inside the bobbin case there is a purple there's a purple dot see the purple dot let me get it just so you can see it with the light 
Okay, there's the purple dot. See that? This is the embroidery bobbin case. If you have a bobbin case without a purple dot or it might have a green dot, that is for sewing. The embroidery bobbin case is especially configured in its tension to handle standard bobbin thread for embroidery. It allows finer threads like the 70 weight or 60 weight or 90 weight or whatever it is to slip through that super fast speeds. So this can help a lot too if you do not, if, you, if you've got some looping going on and you don't know why, check and make sure you're using the bobbin case with the purple dot, all right? Ooh, that's a mess. Y'all just uh, poke your head down in there and make sure that everything's nice and clean before you get started. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. You don't have a CD drive on any of your computers, Marina. You can get an uh, external CD reader. I have one listed in my Amazon store. They're fairly inexpensive. Mine is from Dell. I like Dell. I used to work for cybersecurity for the U.S. Air Force, and the and Dell had a contract with the federal government, the Department of Defense. So I am very comfortable with Dell's products. I don't want to put something from who knows where in my uh, home network. So to me, it is worth it to um, it. It's only like twenty dollars. It's not that big of a deal, right? So. Because they're just not putting, they're just not putting CD readers in laptops or um, you can still get them in desktops sometimes. Your sto sewing store said to use that case for pre-wound bobbins. Okay. Oh, you use the link for the Dell Peggy and it works great. Good. Yeah, I like Dell products absolutely. Um, pre-wounds, I I just use it for embroidery, just because of the thread type. That's why I use that, just for the thread type. Okay, so Patsy, my Dell link, it, you go to Amazon. It's amazon.com slash shop slash power tools with thread. And then I've got a shop in there for quilting, embroidery, technology, and go to tech. And those things that are tech that I like and I use in my, in my own studio, it's in there. So there's also a link to the my Amazon shop down in the description box of this video. Okay. While you're at it, buy a new television. <laughs> I'm an affiliate for Amazon, you guys. I'm kidding. Okay. All right. Sure, Cindy. Absolutely. You know, when you watch my videos, every once in a while, a little nugget will come out and you go, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I know just enough to be dangerous, you guys, but I'm really good friends with uh, my technician who comes to my house to, to uh, you know, work on Spanky if I need him or do any kind of work I need here for me. And he's an engineer himself. And we, I have a tech mind and he has an engineering mind. And so we, he tells me all kinds of stuff. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. So one other very handy thing that I do is the easiest way to do this is I email the instructions to myself and I keep them on a tablet, okay? I set my tablet to never time out. I set it to never. And that way I can always go in. I'm saving a tree, okay? I don't have to use paper and I don't have to use ink. This makes my life very easy, all right? There. I think that about covers it for prep for what we're doing. Does anybody have any questions? What if you're using your regular embroidery thread in the bobbin? Do you, Yes. Yes, it's still a 40 weight. That's fine. If you have the purple dot, use it. If you're because you guys, the big deal about embroidery, one is thread type. Okay. You're definitely using some sort of um, non-natural fiber, usually in your embroidery machine. That is because of the speed that the machine is going to go to town on. Okay. When you're sewing, you are controlling the speed on your with your foot pedal, or maybe you're pressing a button or whatever, but you're controlling that. On the embroidery machine, that is set by the machine. And you can go down and slow your machine down if you need to for specialty threads. But for the most part, your machine is designed to go to town at its default speed. Okay. <clears throat> 
if the is the purple case for pre-wounds only. I used that purple dot case long before pre-wounds came on the market. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Purple was for embroidery and blue for sewing. I've never seen a blue dot, Paula. I've only seen green and no dot, but purple dot definitely for embroidery. Okay. Usually 60 weight. It's calibrated for the finer thread. Yes, Lee is correct. That's absolutely right. That is absolutely right. No, Melanie, you're not late. I've just been, you've seen it before. I'm going through all the supplies and stuff for the newbies. Okay. So you're perfectly fine. Um, I think that's it. If you guys don't have any more questions, we're going to jump into getting ready to do this. So I'm going to show you guys how to hoop first. Now, this design, if you're just making the design and not doing the background quilting, you can do this in a five by seven hoop. It says right here on the front, right here on the back, <laughs> made in the five by seven and larger hoops. So that is just the ladybird part is gonna be in the five by seven hoop. If you are using the background quilting designs, which I am going to do, you need to use the six by six horizontal design. So since that embroidery design is six by six, and the reason for that is, is so that that, that Edge to, it's an edge to edge background quilting is what it is. And it's it wants to disappear into the seam allowance. So it's gonna be larger than the design. If you're gonna be doing the background quilting, then you need, oh, thanks for the thumbs up, Dorothy. I appreciate that, you're a sweetheart. Okay, let me move my mouse. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, so if you're just doing the embroidery design without the background quilting, here's your five by seven. If you're doing the background quilting, you need your six by 10. Got to have that. Okay. Can you use a 10 by nine? Absolutely. You can always use a larger hoop. The, the deal with the larger hoops is you're going to waste a little bit of stabilizer. Meh, not that big of a deal. Yeah. Okay. When, when I use a pre-wound bobbin on my luminaire, do I use the bobbin adapter? Deborah, I don't know what that is. Uh, I haven't played with a bobbin adapter. So I don't think so. I don't know what that is. Okay. Okay. So let me show you how easy it is to do a good hooping. All right. So I'm going to turn this here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I got to do it on my six by 10. You guys, there's my, there. So how I cut my stabilizer I'm going to get this out of the way. I just had this here, the five by seven, for those of you that will be using a five by seven and not doing the background quilting. Okay. So how I do the stabilizer, I lay the stabilizer out on the cutting table on my cutting mat. Okay. I lay it out and I take the largest hoop and set this on there. And I just make sure that I've got an inch or so. Let me back out just a little bit. Let me see the whole thing. I make sure I've got an inch or so on either side, either end. This is a 12 inch roll. So I don't go all, oh, how big a stabilizer do I need? I don't need to get all wound up about that. So I'm just going to set this on here. I got a little bit down here. I got a little bit up here and I just cut it just like that. That's how easy it is to measure your stabilizer. Now on just about every hoop, you're going to have an indicator that shows you where the top of the hoop is. This has a belly button. We've got an innie belly button on this one, and we have an outie belly button on that one. And that goes in that thing, okay? My, my shirt says quilting with my peeps. Those are some cool peeps. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on here, and I'm taking the top, and I'm going to put it in there first. You want to make sure your hoop is nice and loose. So can it, some of them have clamps. That's handy. Make it loose and you center it. Not a big deal. And just get it down in there and kind of give it a little tug. You want to make sure that you don't, you shouldn't be able, this is the plow test. You shouldn't have any ripples. Okay. Plow test. And now I'm going to tighten it up. Get it 
pretty tight, hand tight. Smooth it out again. Not, don't get crazy on that. It doesn't need to be snare drum tight, you guys. And then I'm going to use my little tool. There's a hole in here. So this tool, y'all probably know this, has this little screwdriver. So you can use it wherever you need to on the machine. But that hole right there is designed to fit over this. And then you can screw it tight. And your hand says, oh, thank you. Appreciate that very much. Now, that's a good hooping. Hear that? Okay. <laughs> Love the reference to the belly buttons, Vicki. <laughs> uh, Christine says she bought the wrong bobbins and found out that all machines come with an adapter to use with L bobbins are machines that are new use M. Ah, I see. Okay. So these are class A bobbins in my particular machine. So if yours, that's, I understand what the adapter is now. Yeah. So the L bobbin is the giant one that goes like in the long arm. No, that's the M bobbin. The L bobbin is the one that goes like in my brother PQ 1500 and in Spiky. Yeah. Where can you buy the needles in bulk? Judy, I have them in my Amazon store. I get them in boxes of 100 and uh, they're great. That way you always have one. Okay, good. All right. So we're about ready to get started. I used a utility in an embroidery software called Embrilliance to send them the design to my machine so I don't have to fiddle with USBs, okay? So I'm going to open up Embrilliance. One of the things I really like to do is to um, or see how I left this over here? This goes in my tray. I try to get in that habit to put things in that tray all the time because I will spend most of my embroidery day looking for my scissors. Always seems that that's how it goes. Do I have the 9014 organ needles in my store? Um, I don't use 9014s, Betty. Uh, but if you go to my store and then go looking around on the rest of Amazon, that's fine. That works too. You're good. Okay. What a, what's a good first embroidery machine? Linda, great, great question. I want you to buy the most machine that you can afford where there is a technician nearby. That's the best advice I can give you. Now, that said, uh, the other things I like, it needs to have a USB port. Okay. Don't get one. I don't. So if you get one that uses an app to transfer designs, that's okay. But also make sure that the machine has a USB. Because what if your app crashes? Now you can't use your embroidery machine? I don't like that. Um, so, Patty, it's uh, I've got a link to my Amazon shop below the video here in the description box. Or you can go to Amazon.com slash shop slash power tools with thread. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Pam, that tool is available. I. It might be on Amazon or you can get it at a brother dealer. You can go to a brother dealer store. If you go to Mulk Queen Sewing out of Tempe, that look that up. I think I've got it below in the description box as well. Uh, if you use coupon code PTWT, you get free shipping. He's a fabulous brother dealer. So he likes to give my viewers free shipping. Okay. So you can take a look over at his store. Mulk Queen. Yeah, M-U-L-Q-U-E-E-N, Mo Queen Sewing, they're out of Tempe, or Mesa, or Glendale. <laughs> it's got three stores. Yeah. Okay, so where was I going? I was doing something with you guys. I was talking to y'all about something. Can't remember what it was. Okay. Oh, in brilliance. Now, you do not have to have embroidery software in order to make these designs at all. You just don't, Okay. These designs are, are designed for you to be able to take the designs from the CD or from a USB or wherever you got it or download, put it on a USB and take it over to your embroidery machine. That's exactly what it's designed for. If you have the Brother Design Database Transfer, it's a utility, it's a free utility from Brother. You can use that to transfer designs to Brother and Baby Lock machines. They function on the same wireless technology. 
All right. Okay. Thank you, Margie. You're absolutely right. I forgot about that. You need a minimum of a five by seven hoop size. I recommend six by 10. If you have a five by seven, you'll probably, and what that means is, is you can only make designs up to five by seven. And you might hear people say, well, you can split the design and make two hoopings and put it together. You can't do that unless the design is specifically digitized to do that. You need embroidery software to know what you're doing for that. Okay. So uh, you're get at least a five by seven, but where that comes in is where I said, if you buy the most machine you can afford, because you're going to get hoop envy. Once you get the hang of this and you start doing some super fun stuff and you become a, you know, a, an addict of Kimberbell or whatever, uh, you're going to be wanting to do other designs. Okay. And you're going to want good, you're, you're going to want bigger hoops. Um, I, uh, the next step up, I recommend the Brother NQ 3700D. That is, uh, it's a Disney, it's got Disney designs, which you may not care about, or they have the embroidery only. Mine is a combo machine. It's 18 pounds. I lift it up. I can take it in my motorhome. Good to travel on. Okay. But it's a six by 10. This hoop came from that machine. Okay. So that's where I got that. All right. Uh, or I could just say, go get a luminaire, right? <laughs> go get a luminaire. So I'm going to jump over to Embrilliance. I want to show you guys how I organize my embroidery designs. All right. So I'm going to click present and I'm going to share my screen. And I need to get Embrilliance up and running. And Embrilliance is on sale right now through the 15th. They've got a coupon code. Uh, down below, I've got it. I think I put it down below. I'll have to check. Okay. I'll put it in right after we're finished with this video. If not already, it isn't pinned in our Facebook group. Okay. So this is the Embrilliance main screen. I want to open up that design from the bird. Okay. So I can get the lady bird. I, you can use the open icon up here in the corner. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to come down to my little folder. And I will tell you, most embroidery software likes running on a Windows machine, just FYI. But again, you do not have to have embroidery software to do this. I like to do this because I want to inspect the design before I stitch it, like a roadmap, so I know where I'm going. Okay. So my quick access, I have embroidery. And in embroidery, I file my designs like a card catalog by subject and by author and or by author. Okay. So here, these are subject. Okay. Just think about the old card catalogs we had in the library when we were kids. That's how I like to file my designs or by author. There's some from Anita Good Design. Okay. So I'm going to go through here and scroll down to Kimberbell. I tend to keep all of my Kimberbell stuff together. There's my Kimberbell. All right. And now I'm going to, whoop, now I'm going to go to Mini Quilts, Volume 1. Here are the embroidery files and the instructions, and there's the cutting files. Okay, so I want to go to the embroidery files, and you get a file for every type of embroidery machine. If you're not sure which one your machine uses, uh, Google it. Or it might be in your manual. Sometimes they forget to tell you that. <laughs> So brother and baby lock machines use PES and we're going to go to February. And the reason that I can see these designs as pictures is because I'm running a utility called Embrilliance Thumbnailer. All Thumbnailer does is it lets you see your designs like pictures. So that's very handy, right? I'm going to just pull this over and we're going to grab Lady Bird and drag her onto the embroidery field and let go. And there she is. Okay. Let me minimize this. Were you guys able to see that? Yeah, I think. So. Were you? Anyway, there she is. Let me get back over here. Okay. Let me get back to you guys. Let's see. I uh, can't see my screen with the files. I didn't think so. Well, I talked through it. You guys got the idea. It's, it's security. It won't let me show a screen that I didn't tell it. I apologize. 
Okay. Uh, Lucy, they don't make the Quattro anymore. Hold on to that machine. If you've got the updates, it's got a camera system in it. That it thinks it's a dream machine. So hold on to that. That's a good one. So now you can see the ladybird. All right. So let me go back into a brilliance. I've got the main screen right here. And then I have got the objects panel and the properties box. These are the properties that are in the object. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and open it up. And the first thing we see is default one blue. That is the placement line for the foam. Default two orange. That is the tack down for the foam. Then you're going to need to pull the hoop and trim the foam away. Here is the placement line for the fabric. And there is the tack down for the fabric. Now you notice it's blue, orange, blue, orange. The digitizer did this just to tell the machine there's a color stop. You use the thread color that you need, okay? So this is, it's completely up to you, right? And then we're gonna do the placement line for the wing and the tack down for the wing. Placement line for heart one, tack down for heart one. Placement line for heart two, tack down for heart two. The feet, the beak, that's the little dark line in the beak. And then we've got final satin stitch for the bird, final satin stitches and tail feathers for the wing. There are some decorative stitches on the wing. I said, I said wing, I should have said tail, sorry. Final satin for heart one, final satin for heart two, and final satin for heart three. Where's her crown? Where's the crown? Oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. Okay. Got to keep going, right? There's our little jewels on the crown. This is the placement line for the glitter applique. There's the tack down for the glitter. There's her little eye. And there are these final stitches. These are guidelines for cutting. They say do not stitch in the instructions. I like to stitch just so I have them. That's just for me. It helps you to fussy cut and center the design exactly where you need to. You can stitch those because you're going to cut them away anyway, or if they're still there, they're going to be in the seam allowance. So now I see what I'm doing. I can see and get an idea of exactly what's going to happen. That's just me. You don't have to do this. And then if you have a, a, a baby lock, any brother or baby lock machine that accepts designs wirelessly, okay, wirelessly, that doesn't mean sending it through like PE design. That's totally different different technology. So I'm going to click on utility and it says not responding because I'm sharing my screen, but click on utility sent to Solaris XP one. And that's what I did. Here we go. There is the utility menu sent to Solaris XP one. It wants you to give it a name and then click. Okay. I've already sent it over there. So I'll just call it LB one for ladybird one and tell it. Okay and then it will file sent to the machine, okay? So that's what we got, okay. You couldn't see? Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's the extra screens. I apologize, you guys. All right, so we're finally ready to get stitching. We've been at this now for 43 minutes. That's what you get with the beginner embroidery thing, you guys. I can't just go to town on this because people will be like, wait, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? All right. So the embroidery uh, arm, I'm just going to take this little arm and it fits right into here. Okay. I'm going to turn this a little bit so you guys can see. Behind my machine, I have a thread tree. This thread tree holds 20 spools. And I only use it for about 10 of them. I put one spool on top of my machine and then all the other colors I need in my design are right there. Okay. That's what I do. And I forgot the little color for the line in her beak. And I'll use that right there. All right. Very good. So we are about ready to go. Um, I have already threaded my needle with the white thread. That's the placement line for the background quilting. So I'm going to show you guys how to 
we're going to do two designs. Let me touch it. And I'm going to go to embroidery and the pocket for memory. And I sent this over wirelessly. So I'm going to touch the little radar waves for the wireless. They've got a cloud with a pocket. That's my connection. Don't worry about that. And now I'm looking for those background quilting designs. And here it is right here. Loops, three by six, horizontal. And I'm going to tell it set. So there's my background quilting. Now, before, uh, thank you, Annette. Yeah, that's start now 24. Uh, the thread stands from Amazon. Yes. And if you get the Embrilliance, would you please use my link below in the description box? I would appreciate that very, very much. Embrilliance is very good to me. Before I hit the embroidery key, I don't want to hit embroidery just yet. I've got a key over here that says add. I wish the glare wasn't so bad, you guys. Boy, that makes me crazy. I'm going to put add. I'm going back to the pocket for memory. And wireless. And... Where's my ladybird? I went too far. There she is, ladybird, and set. So now she's good to go, right? And I can see here in my preview, it's gonna stitch the background quilting first and then the bird, okay? If they are not in the right order, you can touch the edit button and there is a little three squares with some arrows going back and forth and you can change the order however you need to, okay? I don't want to do that because it's right. So I'm going to tell it okay. And now I'm ready to go into embroidery. Change to a larger embroidery frame. You see how that happened? Let me go into my settings. It is a 6 by 10. We should be good. It says my frame signs a 9 by 14. Let me tell it a 6 by 10. Tell it okay. Yeah. It says it's not big enough. How about that? Huh? Well, okay. That's not right. Boy, that's frustrating. I didn't see that coming. No fear. Have no fear. Let's see. I have the technology, you guys. I got the nine by 14 hoop. Turn the light off on my machine. Yeah, that might help, huh? It might be better. Here we go. That might be better. Yeah, it is better. Thank you. See you guys. This is what happens in my sewing room. Okay. Let me show you how to hoop this magnetic hoop from Designs and Machine Embroidery. Yeah, I selected the right quilting background design, six by six. That's what it said in the instructions. Yep. Which I don't understand why, but okay. So on these metal hoops, you're going to lay your stabilizer down right on there. Then you're going to take the corrugated plastic and lay it halfway on it. And stand this up right on, get that right on the edge there next to the arm and drop it over and then pull the plastic out, okay? This seems like overkill to me, you guys, but whatever. Tis the nature of machine embroidery. So if you've got a five by seven, you're not doing any background quilting, that's for sure. <laughs> it's the tack down around the block by block that makes it bigger. Yeah, I know, isn't that crazy? Fine, fine, fine. I could go into Embrilliance and uh, make that stitch go away. Then it would fit. 
but I'm, this is not an brilliance lesson. So there we go. Sorry about that. I, I'll know for tomorrow, right? Well, tomorrow I'll be stitching in an eight by 12 on the multi-needle. So it's a little bit darker here, but you should be able to see the screen better. Yeah, look at that. The only glare now is from the door and there's not a whole lot I can do about that. I'm, I don't have my flexi desk on. There we go. That's a little better. How's that? Yeah. It's in my embroidery favorites, Debbie. You got to go into embroidery and find it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the clear blue tiles version doesn't have the tack down lines. I know. I know. Okay, so we're ready to go, and I'm just going to hit embroidery now. Don't you tell me <laughs> that I need <laughs> a bigger line. Okay, I'm just going to, I've got a green button. I will tell you on the sewing machines, so we don't use the reverse. We don't, we do use the knot. You may use needle up, down, and your presser foot and your trim. This button right here, which is the speed of the machine, that is not in use in embroidery files. Then I know that doesn't make any sense. Sure I well, I didn't ask you nothing, lady. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand that either. Then a six by six, you can't embroider if you have the six by six isn't big enough. So what you would do, Debbie, is. Hold on a second. Let me show you what you can do. You guys are going to make me show you what you can do. Okay, we're going to go into this. I'm going to go share. I'm going to drag in the, um, you guys can't see what I'm doing here. I'm going to drag in the background quilting. Um, do I have it on here? I don't have it on this computer. Yeah, I don't have it on this computer. So what I would do would be to drag in the background quilting and then delete. Are you looking at it on the screen? Let me zoom in for you guys. Oh, it's as far in as I can get. What you can do is delete that outer stitch line and it ought, I don't know if it'll fit or not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. I don't know why that would do that. Okay. So it looks like we're ready to go. I am just going to go ahead and, um, oh, sorry. We're going to get stitching here. I'm telling, I want, I want you to be able to see that like that. And it's just going to stitch the placement line. I've got a preview right here. And this preview in the blue is a placement line for the batting. about that too. I wonder if in Embrilliance you could actually resize it a little bit and bring it down. You could do that. That's what I would probably do. So I'm going to take my batting. Now in batting, they say, they, quilters say, so there's like a scrim on the back. Those are, they call them pimples. And the other side is kind of smooth and fuzzy. And in quilting, they say, you don't want your pimples to show. So you put your pimples face down. In embroidery, doesn't make that big of a deal because it's going to have all kinds of fabric and stuff on top of it. So, all right. So I'm going to jump back over here and I'm going to, this is a tack down line for the batting and it's going to go around probably twice. I wonder, did I slow my, I don't think I slowed my machine down. And if you feel the need on your purple thing, if you've got bubbles, you can do this and just kind of strip. You don't have to. 
keep your fingers out of the embroidery field, okay? But if you see bubbles coming, you can do this. The purple thang is handy because this probably won't break your needle. Probably. If you use a wooden tool, you're going to break your needle. If you're going to use your finger, you're going to break your finger. Why am I going to have an issue with the way I'm hooped? What are you talking about, Ellen? What did I do wrong? That magnetic hoop, Patty, this is the, I think this is the 9 by 14. I don't understand. It looks fine to me. So now what I need to do is, re, I'm, so normally you would remove the hoop right now and trim away this excess batting. I'm not going to do that. The bottom, what's wrong with the bottom of it? I think I'm fine. So what I'm going to do is leave this on because I have a, a ruler called a trimmer by George. The needle has gone through your purple thing before. Yeah, it sure will. Your purple thing. So I'm going to use a trimmer by George to trim all of this away. But if you're, if you don't have a trimmer by George, you're going to remove, I'll do it one time and show you how. Okay. So you can see how to do that. You need to have a firm, flat surface when anytime you remove the hoop, you need to have a firm, flat surface. This is a quilter's cut and press, again, in my Amazon store. I love these things. I've got a couple of different sizes of them. But this way, so here's the back. Everything's cool, Ellen. It's all good, I think. <laughs> I need to put this down. I'm just going to do one side of it and show you how it's done. This is where you're going to use your double curved embroidery scissors, not your duck bills. Your duck bills are used for a different reason, okay? So I'm just going to get in here, hold up the edge that you're going to cut to give yourself some... And if you're right-handed, cut clockwise. You're going to get closer to the stitches. Don't cut counterclockwise. And you just cut right along and you put the round part of the scissor flat, okay? Don't And you don't want it right or left. You want it flat, horizontal like that. And just cut. And you're going to get nice and clean right next to that stitching, okay? All right. So, and have a trash can handy. You're going to need it. Now I need to put my background fabric over. Okay, and so I'm going to take my background fabric and make sure that the white on white has the white dots up. This is the back. And you want to put your fabric over it just like this. So when you fold it up from the sides, you've got a, lots of room, at least half an inch on either side. Let me zoom in. Okay. You want at least half an inch on either side, just like this, and then fold it this way and make sure you have at least half an inch on either side. Okay. That's what that is. That's what that's supposed to look like. Okay. I'm going to put this back into the machine. Okay. Good. We're ready to go. And now it's going to do the tack down for the background quilting. And I'm using coordinating thread. Oh, that was the placement line for the fabric. That's fine. And now it's going to run the tack down. So since I just did that, I don't really need to run the tack down. I can go into the needle plus minus button right here. Let me go back so you can see that. It looks like a needle. It has a plus and a minus. You need to learn to love that button because you're going to use it all the time. And next to my thread, I'm going to jump ahead one 
stitch to, and it's giving me a preview of the background quilting. I'm going to tell it okay. And I'm just going to hit go and let it do its thing. Okay, cool. Okay. You can't do bigger than a six by 10 hoop. Patty, I would, I'll, I'll show you what I would do. Hold on a second. See, they're just trying to make it large enough so that the background quilting disappears into the seam allowance. That's what they're doing with that. I was surprised too when I saw that in the instructions. Let me. Uh... It's in the background quilting instructions. It says to use the six by six horizontal loops three. Let me find out. Paula says she's sad she can't do bigger than a 9 by 14. <laughs> Paula, don't be having hoop envy. It's okay. Yeah. This is the 9 by 14. I got this when I started using uh, for my quattro because I have a quattro. And I got that then. Yep. Because once I put the, uh, once I put those, that upgrade in it, it said, oh, I can do that. That's fine. But you can use a brilliant software to make that design smaller. I just don't have it handy. I don't have it handy right here because I sent it over wirelessly. <laughs> Margie says size does matter. <laughs> yeah, you, you could definitely make that smaller using software. It's very simple to do. You can only do an 8 by 11. Okay, okay. It does. Hoop, hoop, hoop envy is a real thing, you guys. Y'all are so funny. So Peggy says in her ladybird file, she doesn't have a placement line. Can you make it smaller on the machine? Yeah, you probably could, Jude. You can. You certainly can. Yes. You could make the design smaller and make it fit. So there's that. Give that a try, Patty. Does the background stitch come with the CD? No, ma'am. That's an additional purchase. Yeah, that's the background quilting you get directly from Kimberbell. Okay. So let me show you this. Don't you think you could free motion that? Maybe, right? All right. So now is the placement line for the, um, the bird body. So I need to change my thread to the blue. So let me do that. Now my snips. Okay, when I change my thread on my machine, this is how I do this. Okay, I'm going to grab the thread way up at the top and I'm going to cut it and drop it down. Now, embroidery thread likes to feed from the top of the spool and then come down. This spool right here is for sewing, okay, or straight wound bobbins, or bobbins, straight wound spools. These are cross wound spools and cross wound likes to go up. So if you don't have a, a thread spool for vertical, what you can do is put a coffee cup behind your machine and then run it from there. All right, so I put the two tails together. I'm just going to give them a little twist so they think they're one and I'm gonna do a single loop knot, just like this. 
I do like to run the thread through the thread guide for the bobbin. It just makes me happy, keeps everything, you know, in the right path. And then I pull it through. I unthread the needle from the front and pull it out to unthread the needle and then pull the thread through the machine. Oh, wrong way. So I'm just pulling the thread through the machine and then up there and then thread it. That's the quickest, fastest, easiest way to change your threads on an embroidery machine. And when you have a load of threads to change, you'll be very, very glad to know that little tip. So it's going to do the placement line for the body, for the foam, placement line for the foam. I got my little foam here. There is a 24 inch scanning mat for the DX tiny. Yeah. Uh, somebody mentioned that this morning. She said she had one. So I'm just going to put this foam down. I'm just kind of, you can tape it if you want. You don't have to. I'm not. Okay. Now I pre-cut my pieces and that does not work if you're going to use foam. Don't do it. going to go around twice, double stitch it. Do I have a favorite embroidery thread, Susan? Susan, I like whatever thread my machine likes. And uh, my machine prefers Isocord, Glide, and Dimes Exquisite. And that's what I'm using right now mostly is Dimes Exquisite thread. Okay. So there's my little bird all puffy. So back to Putting it down. So now we need to trim the foam. Okay. You use my threading technique last time for the first time, Debbie says, and it's genius. Debbie, I wish I could take credit for coming up with that, but no. <laughs> That's how they do it in industry. <laughs> but it's very handy if you've been doing long, long form threading, as I call it. Notice I am cutting clockwise. Okay. If you don't have one of these, you're going to want to put your hoop on a, um, a table or a desk, something like that, your cutting table. But you're going to get, if you're left-handed, cut counterclockwise. It's all based on the bottom scissor. And these are great because, see, I'm not cutting the thread at all. Let me get in here so you can see what I'm doing. And if you get hooked on Kimberbell, I'm not taking responsibility for that. I'm sorry. There's no self-help program. There's no intervention. There's no three-step. There's nothing. You're on your own, okay? You did it to your own self, and that's all I can tell you. You're going to become a Kimberbella or a Kimberfella, and there it is. It's over. <laughs> yeah, this you get just such a nice... And it's... Be, so if you're cutting the other way... If you're going around the other way like this, okay, if I'm going this direction, now this top blade is closest to the foam. That's not what I want. I want the bottom blade closest to the foam so I get a nice, neat, clean cut. Okay. I was talking. I wasn't paying attention. All right, that ought to work. Don't put my scissors back in my thing here. Okay, back into the machine. Now it's going to give me the placement line for the fabric. And I'm going to go. It's just like a millimeter or so outside of that foam line. And I had cut this down because I pre-cut my pieces. But like I said, you cannot pre-cut pieces and do the foam. If you're not going to do the foam, you can pre-cut. All right. Now I'm going to put my fabric down over this. They give you plenty of fabric in your kit. So if you make a boo-boo, you're good. Now, 
Because I've got foam, I am going to use my tape and I'm going to tape this down because it's going to want to dance around and pucker up and do things I don't want it to do. Okay. So you definitely want, anytime you're doing something that's dimensional like this, it's going to want to lift as the needle goes around. And if you want it to be nice and pretty and straight and smooth, you don't want it lifting. Smooth it out real good there. Okay, so that'll that'll look real nice. Just don't want it to be too puffy. Oh, that looks really good. It's gonna go around twice. I'll have to remove the basting stitch when I finish, but it's easy. Actually, Cheryl, um, I'm going to cut it off with my trimmer by George, but yes. Paula's on a diet from Kimberbell. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Now we need to trim away the fabric. I, I stitched over my fabric here. I had my my paper tape. I didn't realize it was going to go over the fabric line. Okay. You can save these or not, whatever you guys. Okay. So the rest of these I have pre-cut. Now, the industry standard for the final satin stitch is like three millimeters. So if you've got little bits that are sticking out, try not to get little bits, okay? But the industry standard is three millimeters, so it should cover it. But try not to have any fuzzies. You can start your fabric if you want to. You don't have to do that. I didn't. And on these applique pieces, there is no heat and bond on the back because I didn't run it through the scan and cut first. And you want to try to do long, smooth cuts so you don't have a bunch of little jags where the scissor ended because that will make your thread fray. So you want nice, smooth cuts. Hold this up straight and just keep the blade smooth right along the edge of the stitching. There we go. I've got some extra. I didn't have my, my thread right, my fabric right. That's That should be okay. Like I said, it's three millimeters. All right. That looks good. Oh, it's hot in here. I should have turned the fan on. Okay. Ready to go back into the machine. Next is the placement line for the wing. And I need to do a thread color change to do that. All right. I'm gonna use my little sips. Cut this one and drop it down. And then the next one is this guy here. Yeah. Twist them together. Just makes life so much easier. I'll be on a cruise. I'm doing a sew and sail cruise, and I'll see people running the thread path the whole time, you know, every single thread change. And it makes me crazy. Open up my thread discs tension discs and it makes me crazy i don't say anything because <laughs> you do you boo <laughs> that's fine let's see i think this is the right color for the wing okay you're talking about if you add a basting stitch after removing the fabric placements and tack down snips oh okay cheryl yeah that's good 
Oh, there is a limit on the words you can send in chats, huh? All righty. That looks awful dark for that wing. Did I get the right thread color? Oh, I grabbed the wrong one, y'all. I'm going to quickly change this up. See, once you get the placement line on, you really, you're not going to see that. So I kind of, I'm looking at that placement line going, that don't look right. <laughs> that doesn't look right at all. Okay. So I'm going to change my thread again quickly. There we go. All right. You know what I didn't bring was my iron. Didn't bring my iron. Let me see. Is this right? Does this fit? And it does fit and it's great. Okay. I'm going to use my other camera right here. And I'm just going to move you guys and show you what I'm doing. Here we are. This is real. This is live and it's real, you guys. I didn't bring my little baby iron over. So here's my placement line. See that? And I'm just going to, I've got heat and bond light on the back. See how shiny that is? So it's got heat and bond light on the back. And I'm just going to put that on there exactly where it goes. And press it down. Okay. And just lightly, just barely tack it down. There we go. Not smushing it because I don't want to smush that foam underneath. So there's my wing. Okay. Cool. How about that? That'll work. I didn't bring my little ironing station over here, you guys. I apologize. All right. So now we're going to. Now, because I ironed it down, I can skip the tack down stitch if I wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and tack it down. So you guys can see, those of you that watched me do the cuts, okay, so that you can see how it works. So let me do this. And then you're going to be able to see if there's any micro, if you, if you need any micro trimming, you can do that. So it looks like I will need to do some micro trimming. I'll do that all day long versus having to... You know what, This the three millimeter stitch might cover this, but I am going to trim it down just a tiny bit. Let me show you what it turned out like. See that? I've got a little bit extra around the top of the heart and the side of the wing there on the tip. And I am going to go ahead and trim that down. I probably don't have to, but I'm going to. So... That's within the three millimeter allowance, you know? So let me get this. See, now I'm trimming backwards and that's not what I wanna do. This is just me being cautious. You don't have to do this. That phone call I just got, I. I had reached out to a, a coworker. I haven't, I probably haven't seen him in 15 years. And I reached out to him last night to ask about a medical procedure he had had and who he used and all this stuff. And I had texted him. Well, <laughs> he just called me back. I told my husband last night, I was like, I hope he's still alive. <laughs> I guess he is. <laughs> Either that or his wife was calling to tell me that uh, he no longer uses his phone, right? All right, this looks good. I think it's going to work great. So the next stitch, stitch is the placement line for the little heart, and that is a thread color change. It's going to happen. That's the one I used the first time for the wing. And all of these thread color changes, you guys, this is why if you ever get the itch for a multi-needle, and if you watch tomorrow, we're going to make all those little hearts with the multi-needle in that one block that has a gazillion little hearts. I'm going to show you guys how to do a color sorting so that you iron everything down at one time 
it goes so fast. Oh my goodness, it's crazy. And here's the placement line. What information, what inflation did I use in a brilliance for the scan and cut? Uh, 1.0 millimeters, Francine. All right, so here's where I figure out if my pre-cut little hearts fit. And I think, I think it's backwards. They are, I think it's backwards. But I, I think it's big enough that I can use it and it'll cover. Yeah, it will. Maybe not. Maybe it's not backwards. Maybe I'll just need to trim it. All right, you guys, I'm going to stand up and do the, uh, I'm going to stand up and do the iron thing again quickly. Okay. And now the tack down line, you just need to make sure that that placement line is completely covered. And if it is, you're good to go. I'm going to trim it up just a little bit. Do some trimming here. It was, it, it was weird the way that maybe I, it might've been that I used the wrong color fabric on that particular heart. You know, that when I did my pre-cutting, that's entirely possible because they all look the same. That's entirely possible. Everything is salvageable in embroidery, you guys. Everything is. Again, this is just me. This is how I roll in my, in my sewing room. And that turned out really nice. That looks great. Okay. So... Now it is the placement line for the other heart. And that is a color change to pink. A dark pink. Okay. Having your threads available and ready to go ahead of time. Y'all, it will take me upwards of an hour to an hour and a half to prep for any particular embroidery design. And if an embroidery design tells you it's only going to take, uh, you know, 29 minutes to stitch that out, multiply that times three if you're doing applique. So if you've got to be somewhere and you're trying to take a hostess gift, do it two days prior because you're not going to get it done in that little bitty amount of time. What? Oh, put your button down, Becky. Okay. It won't let me stitch without the button down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paula, I actually live outside of San Antonio. You're close. Yeah, you guys, I'm always making adjustments on the fly. Always, 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 always. Okay. Now this heart was correct. I don't know what that was. All right, I got to do the iron thing again. Roll with me, you guys. So I'm just putting the heart on here. Yeah, I used all... All the wrong fabrics when I did that. That's okay. I'll just trim around it. Not a big deal. It's perfect. I'm put this back in, and it's going to do the tack down, and then I'm going to do micro trimming. Oops, my needle came unbreaded. So Margie, Margie's asked, she's got a great thing here. You need the most help with knowing how long an entire project will take and how to budget time accordingly. Right. So if you're doing a non-applique project, so if you put the design in the machine, it'll tell you this takes 23 minutes. Okay. That's what this one does. Let me, 
I don't know if you can see it. I think you can see it with this camera. No, you can't. So this design tells me I'm eight minutes of 23 into it. Well, no, not, not really. <laughs> Double that for non-applique, all right? Because that takes into account for thread breaks, um, thread color changes, and all of that stuff. And then triple it for applique. Where are we at? Feet. I need black. This is what I'm talking about on a single needle machine. And a lot of you ask questions like, hey, I want to make embroidery as a business. What do I charge for that? What, you know, I made these tea towels. What should I charge for those? So a good rule of thumb is to assign yourself a minimum wage. So if you think that your time is worth $10 an hour, okay, and the embroidery design is going to take you 10 minutes to stitch out. That's what it says on the machine is it's 10 minutes. So if it's not applique, double that. That's 20 minutes. And then you round to the nearest half hour to include the cost of your stabilizer, your batting, your thread. Because you can't individually account for those when you're doing projects because you're going to use the same cone of thread on multiple projects. So 20 minutes, okay? The design is 10 minutes. It's non-applique, so double that. It's 20 minutes time to stitch the whole thing out. Round to the nearest half hour, that's 30 minutes. If you're $10 an hour, then you would charge $5 for that project. That's a pretty good rule of thumb, okay? If your machine will tell you also, how many stitches per minute it does if you've got a big thing and you need to work that out, okay? My shirt matches the project, the birds. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Oh, okay, great. So Judy's a, Judy's a neighbor. Everybody in Texas is my neighbor. Doesn't matter you're seven hours away, right? <laughs> that turned out cute. All right, the beak, back to my dark pink for the beak. And we are about ready to get into all of the final satin stitches. Now, the beauty of the multi-needle on these satin stitches is that once you get to that point, you're done. You can go watch TV, all right, and use your brother my stitch monitor <laughs> to tell you when it's finished. And that's really nice. You don't have to sit there and do all of that. So, okay. Oh, yeah, the second heart did need trimming. Thanks. <laughs> I'll go back and do that. Yeah. This needle threader is nice, Susan. That's a beautiful thing about uh, the Brother Machines with this needle threader. Very nice. What's going on? I don't see. What's going on? No, something's wrong. That's weird. I got bobbin thread. Hold on. It looks like it was stitching, but it wasn't. Look at that little, there's nothing there except the little knot. That's weird. That's really strange. And while it's out, I'm going to trim away. Yeah, Cindy says, never, never leaves her machine. Because in the, y'all, single needle machines, they have such an insecurity. Comp it's crazy. When you get up, they're like, don't leave me. Ah, plunk, and something goes wrong. <laughs> it always happens. Multi-needle machines are uh, this side of industrial. And they're like, you go on, sweetie. I got this. You, you go do you. It's fine. Yeah, that's the beauty of having uh, a multi-needle. Thank you for reminding me about trimming down on my pink heart. Well, if you do your trimming right on the, <laughs> the concept was right, right? <laughs> 
But um, yeah, single needles, they, they don't like to be left alone. They get, they freak out. They're like, no, 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 you and me stay here with me. So whenever something goes wrong on your embroidery machine and something's not happening right, stop it. Don't assume that if you let it go, it'll work itself out. That never happens. That's not how that works. So I'm going to get in here and reload the bobbin. That's always a real good way to make sure if, some, if something's wonky and you're not sure what, try that first. The thread path is correct. And I'm gonna put this back in the machine. Okay. And now I'm gonna go back into my needle plus minus and I'm gonna go back one thread color which is the beginning of the beak and tell it okay. Now let's try this again and see if things don't change. Again, this is, there we go. This is what I love about machine embroidery. It is very recoverable when things are wrong. Judy, that's hilarious. She said the machines are another form of AI, AI but the machines are insecure and want you close. <laughs> yeah. It's like you have little kids on the phone rings. They're fine. And yes, exactly. That is absolutely right. <laughs> it's exactly right. Oh, they're hilarious. Wrong camera. No, we're good. So now what? That's what that was supposed to look like. Isn't that pretty? Now that turned out nice. <laughs> Love it. What is this? Oh, that's that dark line that goes through the middle. So let me, uh, the middle of the beak. I don't have this on the tree, so I'm just going to use the second spool holder on the top of the machine. A nice difference between the uh, Luminaire and the Stellaire, if you're interested in one or the other, the cover on the Luminaire, this is the cover, it lays back completely flat to create a thread stand. They did not do that on the Stellaire. They just did it on the Luminaire. So that's really a nice feature to have a little thread stand right there handy. Okay. And we're gonna do that dark little line through the center there. You're gonna make a loop. That's okay. I gotta trim that out, clean that up. Next is the uh, satin stitch all around my puffy bird. So, like I said, we are just in the final uh, things here. Now, I'm not going to. I'm not going to cut this out today. Uh, all of my blocks will be trimmed all at once on Monday when we get ready to uh, put everything together on the finish. If you ever have thread issues and you get lots of fuzzing going on in here, always pull the thread toward you if, if you can because you don't want to pull it from the top and pull that fuzz back up inside your machine. You have the Brother and Novus VM5200. It doesn't have the flat top. Nope. That was uh, just for the Luminaire that did that. This is five minutes, you guys. I will be right back. Talk amongst yourselves, please.
Okay, I'm back. See, Darla does pretty well while I'm gone. She's all right. Ooh, chicken and dumplings in the pressure cooker. That is an excellent idea. Pam, that sounds wonderful. I made chicken, grilled chicken breasts last night. That's a great idea. I might do that. Now everybody wants chicken and dumplings. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, you guys were here with her. That's right. So y'all were here with Darla. And so she's like, I'm okay. All my friends are here. I'm all right. <laughs> this is... This is such a phenomenal embroidery machine. I, I bought her many, many years ago as an XP1 and did the uh, did all the upgrades. So I'm on XP3 now. I really like that about Brother. They'll give you the upgrades. You thought it was brave, Kay? No, I've got complete faith in Darla. She's, she's fantastic. Really, really amazing embroidery machine for a single needle. I did have to use this machine... I couldn't use the multi-needle for everything on the chicken salad quilt because the bodies of the birds, that Lori Holt quilt, were huge. Uh, so some sometimes when you've got, you know, the, you've got the wing, like there's one of them where the bird's kind of doing like this, right? Well, there's a tail off the bird and the wing is up and the whole thing is just ginormous. And I had to have the 10 by 16 hoop. And uh, if you are new, one of the things I love to do on my applique embroidery is to scan in a paper pattern. And so in the case of chicken salad, I use Lori Holt's Simple Shapes. because you got to buy the simple shapes in order to make it. And you just scan in the simple shape using the scanning mat into the Brothers Scanning Cut and it'll give you an outline. Or you can trace around it with a Crayola marker, neither here nor there. But you can do that and then the the vector graphic that's created by the scan and cut. Well, I used that to cut out the fabric. Okay, so that was easy. But then I imported that FCM file into In Brilliance Stitch Artist 2 and with the click of a couple buttons created an applique embroidery file. So it'll make the placement line and the tack down if you want it, which you don't have, have to. And then it'll give you that final blanket stitch. And that's the way I did chicken salad. I made all 12 chickens that way. You need a name for your machine? Something will hit you, Judy. When I bought my 10 needle, the Brother PR 1055, somebody had, um, I put a picture of it on Facebook, and somebody had done one of those little memes of Spanky from Little Rascals going, wow! And I was like, Spanky, that's the perfect name for that machine. So that's how he got his name. Uh, consequently, my luminaire is Darla. My King Quilter 2, which is a long arm, is Alfalfa. Okay. The only one that's a little different is my NQ3700D, my travel machine. And she got named Gypsy <laughs> because she's a traveler. <laughs> All right, time to do the final satin stitches on the tail feathers and around the heart. So you've got a Betty. Yeah. Wow, 30 million stitches. You go, Brenda. See, you guys, we've got some really seasoned embroiderers in here. You guys, you do this all the time. All the time. You need a lesson on using Kimberbell cleared blue tiles. Do I have one, Kay? I absolutely do. If you go into YouTube... And in the search box, type in Kimberbell Clear Blue Tiles. My video on how to use those is one of the very first one that pops up. So you'll see that. And it's it goes step by baby step, how it works, how to think about how to use them. Yeah, this is cute. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is turning out adorable. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great name, Tracy. Her friend named it Madonna because she's a material girl. I love that. <laughs> You have Thelma and Louise. There you go. That's excellent. 
I used to have a couple of goldfish named uh, Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, now you guys have to go out and buy a pressure cooker. Y'all, if it wasn't for the Instant Pot and the air fryer, we would not eat. <laughs> I mean, it. Yeah, I also have a, from Costco, I bought the Green Pan. It's called Green Pan and it's a countertop grill. Use that too. Thank you, Margie. She says, my tutorials on clear blue tiles are really good. Yeah, they're fun. I like clear blue tiles. I use them all the time. If I've got a quilt that's small, that's not going to go on the long arm, you know, it's so big or whatever, something I just need some background filler on, like a pillow or whatever, I'll use clear blue tiles. Oh, Margie, my, uh, I do have a combo instant pot and air fryer in the motorhome. Safe space. Yeah, I've got that. So you have to learn this. Kay, you're going to love it. You're going to love doing this. You've had your machine for years, but you just retired. Good for you. This is a wonderful way to spend retirement. I'm telling you what, I'm living the dream, y'all. Keith and I were talking about that last night in front of the fire. And uh, I I love it. You know, I, we just sit there and thank the Lord for our blessings, for sure. Let's see. Yep, that, uh, that three millimeter satin stitch is making, it's covering that little... Any little jiggy jags I had on the trimming. You had chicken and rice for lunch out of your Instant Pot. So, have you I made a, uh, there's an Instant Pot uh, beef stroganoff. And you put everything in, including the noodles, but you don't mix the noodles in. You got to lay them on top and then pour the water or the beef broth over that. Fantastic. So good. <laughs> I know, Brenda, that's the same thing. How on earth did I do anything when I was working? Because I'm, I stitch constantly. <laughs> you want a fireplace where you can have chicken and dumplings and wine? There is an app. I think if you've got a smart TV, there's an app for a fireplace or artwork and you can just run that or you can cast it from your iPad or your iPhone to your smart TV and it'll just run a fireplace. It's fantastic. Pretty neat. Oh, wow. Judy, that's cool. Her first job was babysitting for Aunt Teppy's sewing classes at the neighborhood center. How nice. That's cool. Yeah, I remember being a little girl. We had a, a fabric store in Universal City, Texas called Salgies. And my mom would go in there and I would run around just like y'all in between the bolts and hide and goof around while she was shopping for fabric. It was fun. And then DBJJ end to end quilting designs for background quilting in the mini quilts. Hmm. This looks amazing. This looks just amazing. Next is the, the little stitches that are inside of, what color are those? I guess they could be white. Okay, I'll do that. I'll put white ones in there inside of the wing. Yeah, okay. We'll do little white feathers in there. What the heck? Yeah, when I was active duty Air Force, and I think I was an E5, a staff sergeant. I was in the Air Force for 20 years. And uh, I didn't fly a plane. I flew a desk <laughs> at, the, at Wilford Hall Medical Center. <laughs> I was medical admin. And um, there was a cloth world that was right near where I worked. So I live nearby and uh, I would, I would go work at cloth world after I got off work during the day. I loved it. And it was funny cause I was a supervisor at work. I had airmen working for me and I would go in there and say, I don't want responsibility for anything. Okay. Nothing. I don't want to do the register. 
just let me go around the store and put things away. And you guys, I satisfied my OCD tendencies. I'd get all the zippers right, you know, and I'd get all the fabric folded nice and put on the shelves and clean. I loved it. I loved it. So. Am I originally from Texas? Sort of. My dad was in the Navy. My mother lived with her mother while my dad was in the Mediterranean in Janesville, Wisconsin. And that's where I was born, Janesville. And then we moved to Texas in 1967 and uh, Sherman, Texas. My dad helped shut down Perrin Air Force Base. And then they assigned him to Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio. And that's where I lived for the rest of my life, pretty much. Did I make my shirt? No, ma'am. I get them from uh, Facebook ads. Your Air Force. Oh, good. BMTS in summer of 89. Really, Dave? No kidding. 3706 BMTS. Were you a TI? That's cool. That's cool. I was... Where was I in 89? Uh, I was at Randolph in the clinic at 89. In 89, yeah. And then in 90, I shipped out to uh, Albuquerque to Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico. Are you on the road, Dave? <laughs> yes, little Russia. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, I love it. Yes, you can use your TV as art with that app. Yeah. Oh, this is turning out so pretty. All right. Final satin stitching around heart number one. I used to want to be a TI. Little Russia. Good grief. I went into basic training in 83. And I was running around doing my thing, and I hear, Airman! <laughs> and I stopped. And this TI called me over, had me shaking in my boots. And a uh, guy by the name of John Goldman went to high school with him, the band. He's like, hey, what are you doing? I said, fuck, ah, you scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh. You were in Albuquerque for 10 years, Sophies. Okay, 90 to 2000. That's cool. I was there from 90 to 92. I worked at the hospital there at the base. Yeah. You were at Carswell, Lackland, and Keesler. Awesome. That's great. Yes, Melba, your test worked. You're in. <laughs> She's good. Oh, you found family in, uh, Pamela found family in Janesville. Yeah, that's great. You're off today and tomorrow. Okay. I think about you now every time I fly. Next time we fly is the 27th. We're Southwest. We're going to go to um, Orlando. Hopefully the door doesn't fly off the plane, right? <laughs> Woo, that was something. That was something, y'all. Holy moly. You know, it was only by the grace of God that there was not somebody sitting next to that door with a baby in their arms. Grace of God. That's why you need to sit down and put your seatbelt on. Woo, mercy. That just gives me chills just thinking about that. And I love to sit in that exit row because you get more leg room. That's nothing to play with, you guys. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. And, of course, somebody had their... Oh, you're retired Navy, too? Nurse? Excellent. That's great. Yeah. Cool. There's a lot of nurses that watch my channel. I've noticed that. A lot of nurses. Your husband was Navy as well, but you were always down south. Yeah. My uh, my dad switched to the Air Force after he, he got out of the Navy because, you know, family man and all that with me in the picture. So, uh, yeah, he switched to the Air Force. He had to take a rank reduction by one, but it was worth it. But 
Think about Orlando, the end of February. Got to do it before spring break. Hmm. Yeah, end of January, we're going to go to Orlando. We're getting on a cruise, so and sail cruise, uh, the Scan and Cut Masterclass. Your dad was in the Navy band. That is so cool. I did some uh, I did some playing for the Air Force Band of the West when I was in. Yeah, I had fun with that. It was a good time. Get another nurse here. Yeah, there you go. See, we've got lots of professionals here that hang out with us. A lot of fun. All right. Next is a decorative stitch on top of the satin stitch for heart number two, and it's in white. So I'm going to change this out. I didn't travel too much when I was in the Air Force. I traveled to Kirtland for two years. I was in Korea for a year. I was in the Azores for 15, 18 months. Took an extension while I was there. And all the other times I was in San Antonio. And I did the full 410 shuffle. <laughs> and I retired out of Brooks. Yeah. You fly American all the time back. Y'all, that's a fluke. That's a fluke. Okay. This is so cute. I can't stand it, you guys. Okay, here's the little jewels on top of her crown. Now, I am going to use metallic thread for this. So let's talk about metallic threads. Okay. There are all different kinds of metallic threads. However, there is a particular brand called Kingstar. And this is brought into the country by designs and machine embroidery, and then they shop it out to different stores all over the country. Okay. So this is my favorite. It's called King Star. I'm using MG1, which matches the crown glitter vinyl perfectly. Okay. I've used other metallics and the frustration level is not fun. So I'm not saying no other metallics are good. I'm just saying my personal experience, Becky sitting her at her embroidery machine, is that I prefer this metallic thread. It is woven with a silk core. And this is imported from Japan by Designs and Machine Embroidery. Again, they, they let quilt stores be resellers or all brands or wherever, right? And let's see, metallic thread can be fussy, fussy, but this particular thread, for whatever reason, all right, I've got a problem up here in my thread path. Let me fix this. See how that's kind of tilted up? It's not happy. So I'm going to take this, put this here. Metallic is nothing to mess with, y'all. You got to. You know, all the stars have to align usually, but this particular thread is so good. It's used to make, it's the same stuff they use to make those gorgeous decorative kimonos in Japan. All right. So these are the three little jewels on top, and then I'm going to use the same thread for the applique. Okay. Dave, you don't want to go to Korea. Don't bother. You're not missing nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's so pretty. Okay, so Debbie says Ro Robeson Anton metallic works for her. All right, here we go. Here's the placement line for the crown. And hopefully mine cut the right direction. I think it'll work. Where did it go? Something fell earlier. I think that was it. Where did it go? Where did it go? 
See, this is what happens, y'all. I lost my crown. Mm. Both of the crown, my little red hearts. Where did all that go, y'all? Huh. Well, that's really strange. That's crazy. I had it cut out I, earlier. I felt something like fall and disappear. And did it go under the skin and cut? No. I don't know where it went, you guys. Well, that's nuts. Things just get up and walk away. Okay. That's annoying. Never fear. Always have spare. Always. So I'm going to cut a little piece here. I do not know where that went. It says you need a two by two square. So this is what it'll this is what it'll be like for you guys. So there's a clear on the glitter glitter vinyl. There is a clear covering. You want to just kind of bend that backwards a little bit and peel that apart. There are gremlins. I don't know where that went. That's crazy, isn't it? Y'all saw it. It was here. I'm just gonna put this down. And I'm going to use a little tape. As soon as this stitches, I'm going to find it. That's how that works, right? <laughs> as soon as it stitches. Okay. And that's fine. It'll be okay. Is it in my tray? It's not. Isn't that the craziest thing, y'all? Hold on. I got to trim my crown off. Here. Changing up on the fly. All the time. That's how I roll. I think the military has a lot to do with that. When Rosemary and her husband Mark were here, they were saying, you're so disciplined. <laughs> like, wow. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't get frazzled. Why should I, right? This too in time shall pass. It's fine. It's fine. As long as you... You know, I've always been one of those people with a plan B. If plan A doesn't work, if I have plan B in my pocket, I've used this throughout my life, you guys. If I have plan B in my pocket and plan A goes well, I'm a happy girl. If it doesn't, that's fine. I'm good. Gorgeous. <laughs> I beat the gremlins this time, you guys. Yep. I beat the gremlins. <laughs> Another nurse, Jeanette. Yeah, that's cool. When I went for uh, my master's degree, I, uh, I went for medical librarian. Because there's no math <laughs> in that. <laughs> oh, the guys up on the server deck used to make fun of me. They're like, you have a master's degree in shelving? <laughs> I said, no. Nope. I've got one year of experience at the next lower grade. And then the OPM system for GS service, that matters. Yep, that qualified me. I retired as a GS-12. So. Yeah. Put that in your Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You love math? Good for you. Ugh, I'm an English wingy. Yeah. I'm... I'm a grammar nerd for sure. 
Y'all, that's going to make me crazy so I can find that. There's our little eyeball. And here's the last little trimming uh, things. I'm going to go ahead and stitch those. You don't have to. It says not to. But I'm going to do it because I have found when I use my uh, the orange trimmers that they help me to center. So it's just in white and they're, uh, they're not going to be seen. Orange pop rulers, that's what they're called. So again, these last little bits that we've actually, they're right on the edge of that. I don't even need to do it. They're right on the edge of that basting stitch. Nope. Yeah, it's just a basting stitch. So Okay. I've got a little bit of some trimming I need to do here, some trimming I got to do. We have a little bubble. We've got a bubble in the beak, which I will trim up. Oh, you guys. Let me trim up that bubble in the beak real quick. Now, when I do jump threads, let's get down here. I'll show you the jump threads. The gremlins hid your top stitch needles. I hate that. Who invited them in the sewing room anyway? All right. Let me put this. Okay. So I use the Fomore spring scissor snips. Okay. They're on a spring. And Revlon eyebrow tweezers, the pointy ones. These are the best. They work great. So I'm just going to grab this thread that got a wiggle and get rid of that. And when I trim jump threads, I've got a jump thread here. Let's get in as close as stinking possible so you guys can really see how this works. I gotta back up. Okay, I got a jump thread between his feet. The embroidery machine naturally goes from left to right. So this little jump thread right here, you may not be able to see it. it. It bothers me. Let me get this close so you can see it. Right there. Will it focus? It will not. And there it is. See it? There's that jump thread. So it goes from point A to point B when it does the jump. If you trim where it entered point B. So let it trim. Some jump, some machines don't automatically trim jump threads. I'm on the wrong camera. Sorry, you guys. There. I apologize. So it's going to go from A to B. So I trim. You let it. If, okay. So I just will get my little snip tip under there on B. And then it naturally pops up cleanly if you get it all the way. The tension pops it up and you get a nice clean little thing. So I have all kinds of little jump threads here in the wings. So I pop it on B and it stands up to where you can't even hardly see it. And then I can clean that up. So just trim your jump threads. Trim the right side of the jump thread first because the natural stitch order goes from left to right. It will stand up taller, easier for you to grab a hold of and get a nice clean little snip. And it's a lot quicker. This is just adorable, y'all. Revlon. Yep. Revlon tweezers. They say Revlon. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. These are hard to find. These are the old kind. I've had these for years and years. Now they got those gold ones that are really pointy. These are just the best tweezers I've found because they hold so tight. The ones they make for stitching don't always hold tightly.
And did you see how that metallic went around there with no trouble at all? I think that's it for the jump threads, y'all. Oh, that needed to come up. There. All done. That looks great. Let me back out. Okay. So this was a beginner embroidery lesson. And tomorrow, when I work on the multi-needle, I'm going to refer back to this video so I don't have to go through all the beginner stuff again. I will go over how to program the machine with you, though, okay? So this is what we ended up with. Isn't she precious? She just turned out absolutely adorable, okay? Lots of little tips and nuggets along in here. So thank you so much for joining me. Did we keep this to two hours? Two hours and five minutes. <laughs> That's because I had a few things. But already, that worked out great. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been a lot of fun. If you're brand new to embroidery, I encourage you, before you do this, go ahead and run the design using scraps out of your scrap basket. If you are brand, brand new to it, okay, take the time to use your scrap basket and uh, as Deborah Jones says from Designs and Machine Embroidery, there are those who test and those who wish they did. If you're a seasoned embroiderer, go for it. You know your machine. You know how it's going to stitch. But if you're brand new, you have got to get comfortable with your machine and know what it's going to do and know what kind of thread it likes and all of that. So um, I definitely encourage you to run a test. Don't get over ambitious and use your good, pretty fabric first. OK, all right. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for joining me. We will be doing this again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, okay? And we'll be working on the multi-needle. If you don't have a multi-needle, join in anyway and see how it works or just put it on in the background while you're doing something in your sewing room. And I think you would, uh, you know, just keep me, we'll keep you company. So if you would, please give the video a thumbs up if you like the content. And please consider subscribing. I'm on the hunt for the 100,000. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Y'all go sew something. Bye.